Hello and welcome back to another episode of Chris's Retro Corner. I'm Chris, this is my Retro Corner and this is my BBC Model B. In a previous video, and I'll link it up here, we had a very quick look um, at the fantastic collection of equipment that came along with the with my purchase of this BBC B. I have been holding off turning this on. I have done my research, I have read the internet. Not all of it, but a fair bit. And uh, it, it seems that it seems that the capacitors go in the power supply of this. Um, so so often it's so often it's not it's not even worth trying to turn it on and um, just see if it works. It got stored. It was working uh, when Clive stored it. Um, so yeah, I've resisted the urge to turn this on, and I really do want to really want to hear that beep beep. Uh, but yeah. I've hung off, I've hung off just a little bit um, and I've got myself from Retro Clinic um, a full capacity kit. It's a, a very decent price, it's a very decent price this kit and um, you can see what it comes with, it's abs absolutely loads. These are the two capacitors that generally go, these are the ones that everybody refers to. Um, so, so when you see split bits of capacitors and filth and spatter all over the uh, the PSU, it's these two that are the culprit. Um, but I figure if, if I'm if I'm there, rather than spend two or three pound just getting these two little things, um, let's go the whole hog and recap the entire thing. Why not? Why not? Why not? Um, so this is the kit I've got. This is this is the kit from Retro Clinic, and uh, and yeah, I am really looking forward to fitting this. So. Again, I say I've done my research. Mark fixes stuff, and I'll put a, I'll put a link to his video below. So Mark Payne at Mark fixes stuff has very recently done this this very kit, this very kit um, full recap. So and that was a, that was a great watch just to give me a heads up as to what I'm letting myself in for. Um, I do not profess to be any form of aficionado uh, with these things. It's not a how-to. This is my corner. This is how I do it. If if I screw it up, then that's my fault. Um, but yeah, don't, don't necessarily use me as a guide. I'm using other people and other resources as a guide. Um, and I'm just showing you my experience with these with these old devices. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's not procrastinate anymore. Let's actually get on with it. So I need to remove the power supply um, from the beeb. And then I need to start looking about getting the, pulling the old capacitors off. So yeah, let's uh, let's let's crack on. So top off. It hadn't got any screws. I've got a couple. I've actually I bought a few screws, so uh, so I can actually fit that properly when we're done. I don't envisage myself being in and out of here too often, but yeah, that might change. So we'll see. So the first thing we need to do, I think, really, is probably what would be a great idea is if I were to take a really close up image of just where these little wires are connecting, just to make sure I get these the right way round when uh, when I put it back together, because I, I don't want to get that wrong. I can't imagine that would be a, that would be a good thing. Where does that one go? Oh no, that's not, that's just the speaker wire. Splendid. So it's just that, just that one over there as well. And those two, there we go. So yeah, just taking a quick, a quick selection of uh, of images there, just to make sure that I know where everything's going back when I put the board back in. Well, when I put the power supply back in and wire up the board. So I can probably take the power supply out without upsetting the keyboard. So you should probably leave that there. Those of you who know, will know that those are fitted the wrong way. So I may just swap those over. Um, but yeah, for now, it's gonna be a case of uh, taking the connectors off the board. So that's the connectors off. We shall pop that the other way around. Find some screwdriver. It looks like it's just these three screws, so we'll take those out quickly. Yeah, that sounds like that's 
ready to come out. No, that's got to pass through there. Will it? Will it pass through there? No. I'm going to have to undo that. No, the keyboard has to come off. There you go. <laughs> the keyboard does indeed have to come out. Okay, probably don't need to take that out. I'll just move it slightly out of the way. There we go. That was a lot easier, wasn't it? <laughs> Might have to blow this through a little. But maybe I'll come back and revisit this as a, as a proper clean up at some point in the future. Ooh, a little bit of shimmying, and we're out. We're free. So we'll pop that over there. We will put this very carefully somewhere else. And yeah, there's the main event. This is what we're concentrating on today. So. Quick look. Everything looks in in good nick. Pretty happy with that. There's there's one of the two reefer caps that everybody refers to. Looks like that's in good nick. And that one looks okay as well. Can't work out if that's got a bulge in it. Maybe a slight crack. Maybe, maybe not. Might have gotten away with that. So this is gonna take a while. So if you're doing this sort of thing, I'd suggest you grab a tea. lovely settled in <laughs> um, and yeah be 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 ready for this to take a while take your time I'm, go I'm gonna take my time I want to do this as, as properly as I possibly can do so that's the kit that's the invoice don't need that anymore um, and this it's the instructions. Uh, these, these are the instructions, not this is the instructions, honestly. So as you can see, um, Retro Clinic have, have really got some very concise instructions um, with you know what goes what goes where, various connectors are, and what we're looking at um, as we do the as we do the job. That's pretty comprehensive. It's also quite small. <laughs> Might have to pop some reading glasses on for that, but um, but yeah, everything you need to know. Now I think mine's mine's uh, mine's an Aztec type. So this cap kit here, that will fit either the Aztec or the BSR types of uh, PSU. Upside down, but there you go. You can see that it's Aztec. So few <laughs> first hurdle first hurdle jumped. That's uh, that's the purchase of the correct cap kit. So that's good. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm going to go away and have a quick read of these because as as you've seen, this is literally the first time I've unboxed these. I will have a very quick skim through. I will have these to hand. I will probably have Mark Fix's stuff's video on a device to one side as well, just so I can see how he does. Just so we can see how he does bits as well. Is it supposed to have that bend in that? Just noticed that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's formed. <laughs> hadn't seen, hadn't seen that on previous videos and whatnot. And that that looks like it's bent back. Is it just is it just me or does that look not square at all? Oh well, not going to argue. <laughs> it was obviously working when it came out. Right, I'm going to go and read this, and I'll catch you guys in just a bit. So, tea has been drunk. I have read this. It's really comprehensive. Um, Mark at Retro Clinic has done an absolutely fantastic job of guiding you through each step uh, of the of the capacitor replacement. Um, really comprehensive. Um, so yeah, um, let's get on with it. <laughs> Basically, yeah, let's go. Um, okay, dokie.
So first thing we need to do is uh, remove the two earth bonding nuts and screws, uh, taking care not to lose the washers. So yeah, let's, uh, let's make a start. and scuppered at the first hurdle <laughs> look at that um so we've got some form of thread lock on there already so i'm gonna i to need to find myself another screwdriver and something with which to crack that thread lock off with as well hmm right so we've got a selection of toolage and uh yeah let's have a let's have another go so that's the earth wires off the three fixing screws off the uh, the metal case and yeah they were they were glued on there proper <laughs> wow still moving on okay remove the power switch now if i remember from mark fixes stuff video we probably want to try and slide that switch out first Let's, let's take that off there. Blimey, there we go, <laughs> there we go. That's probably not as difficult as I make this look, to be honest. But uh, yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a little challenging for a second there. So, probably worth another quick picture here, just to, uh, there you go. <laughs> just to uh, aid memoir as to which, which way around these wires go. really interesting if we can if we can focus on that so this is the low voltage side of the switch and you can see that the uh, connects uh, this sort of lovely dark copper color um, and that's the that's the main side and if you can if you can see sort of right in there um, yeah it's a, it's a little it's a little dark I'm not entirely sure if that's something I should be bothered about probably is um, if you've done this before and you think that's a problem get in touch down below and, and, and let me know chances are I might swap that switch out by replacement and uh, just swap the switch it's very weird it feels very shiny as if it's actually some of the plastic that's <laughs> that's worked its way down onto those terminals but it worked when it went into storage <laughs> So hopefully it will work when I put it back together again. Right, power switch done. Now for the auxiliary power connector. free there we go so we can pop that over there 
turn our attentions to the main vent. Cool, blimey, that, that thread lock stuff or glue, whatever it was. Hot snot at some point, I think. It's terrible. Absolutely everywhere. Right. So, another quick refresh of the instructions. Right, here we go. So the main event, let's fire up the old soldering iron. So now that's warmed up, we can start about removing these uh, these capacitors. It does say, it does say there, um, don't bother making that of the values. We'll make sure that you put the right ones in the right place in the next step, which is awesome. So yeah. We need to take out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's go with the cap removal montage. One. There we go. Ten more to go. Wow, check check that out. <laughs> it looks absolutely awesome, doesn't it? Love it when the solder does that. <laughs> And there we go, that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And that's all the capacitors out. So, what I need to do now is uh, clean up where I've taken where I've taken these capacitors out on the back with a little bit of uh, solder wick uh, and then a, a little bit of IPA just to clean those off. Um, this is really clean on this side. Um, might give it a quick rub over with IPA or might not actually it's just just that one there but yeah what I might do is scratch off some of this uh, some of this thread lock type stuff that was a that was a pain in the posterior <laughs> but yeah caps out now we need to uh, now we need to put them back in again so let's set about cleaning up this board but first Let's have a, a swig of a second tea. I've got a feeling this is going to be a three tea job. Super. A lot nicer. So a little bit of IPA in there. Cotton swab. 
and we'll just go over those solder points. I've tried to remove as much of the old solder as I can. Uh, as I understand it, um, not that I'm mixing leaded and, and, uh, and lead-free solder. I'm, I'm actually going to be using leaded solder because that's what will be on here originally anyway. Um, but yeah, if you, if you do happen to mix the two, apparently you can potentially cause uh, dry joints. Um, they don't necessarily like playing together. Um, so I'm not doing that anyway. But uh, I'm definitely trying to clear off any of the old flux that may have been on here. Just just checking. So some of the uh, some of the copper showing through on that trace. It looks a little bit raised, but uh, I think that's going to be okay. So yeah, just carry on cleaning up the old solder points, and then we can start putting capacitors back on. figure you don't get a chance to, uh, to clean under components very often so may as well just give the board a very quick wipe over just where these capacitors have been. Eyeball that fuse quickly. Looks nice. There we go. Ooh, lovely new components and cable ties. Splendid. So we can uh, the cable ties were clipped off, sort of around here and whatnot. We can uh, we can put those back again. So, a quick slurp of tea, perhaps. Lovely. And let's set about getting these new capacitors in. Right, so C1, that's that, with the 10 nanofarad, that'll be that one. So let's go. So one thing I've got to say, I think, um, is if you are doing this, the instructions make it particularly clear um, with the with these little two reefer um, suppression caps um, it doesn't matter which way around they're put on the board and they're not polarized it does say this here however with the rest of these electrolytic capacitors um, they do have a, a distinct positive and negative um, the positive on these caps is the longer leg out of the two um, and that's the uh, that's what's marked on the board here you can see there's a positive there um, the negative is marked by having uh, having this band on the shorter leg so you need to be absolutely positive that you are putting these in the right way around so I am I'm checking and I will probably double check again later with these ones So that's all the capacitors in the right place. Just going to finish up the uh, the rest of these instructions quickly. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think we've got everything in the right place. I'm going to go over the board and I'm going to solder everything in. Let's have, a, let's have a quick look at, at the soldering on the board. All the originals have got this, uh, this sort of little bit of red dye on here, which is quite interesting. I don't, I don't know why that was. Um, but yeah, those are, those are mine. 
Well, I don't think they're looking too bad. Reckon they look okay. So we'll clip the legs off. So it's all nice and tidy now. We'll give my solder, well, <laughs> give my uh, attempted soldering, um, joins a little bit of a, a go over again with a little bit of IPA just to tidy things up. Also, according to the instructions there on the back, it says uh, reflow solder joints around the two transformers and the four pin input choke, as these can often dry out. Inspect your work, make sure we haven't left any component wires uncut um, or accidentally shorting anything. So, uh, yeah, you can't, I don't think you can be too careful um, when you're working on these things. So, uh, yeah, we'll give it another another look over. It's all looking pretty good. Quite happy with that. So let's uh, let's make some space and we'll see if we can't get this back in its chassis. So now we need to get this back in here. We'll check I've not missed anything. So the reverse of the procedure. Okay, so this is where I need to uh, just have a, a quick little double check as to which way around those wires were when they came off. Back in a sec. So I have re-familiarised myself um, with how this switch connects. I have replenished my T because this is definitely a 3T job. Mm, lovely, still a bit too hot. Um, so let's get this back in the chassis properly and, uh, and back in the beep. Sounds like it's in. Get how firm those switches were. <laughs> so on, off, lovely. Okay, so that's back in as well. Lessons learnt. That one needs to go in first because you have real problems aligning the boards, probably because the wires are all sort of pushed up against each other. Um, and also the washers under these aren't magnetic. Um, so if they get lost, you end up chasing just a little bit around the board. But it's okay. It's all part of the fun. Right back to those later so we need to get our earthing wires back in position Now let's put some of these back on. 
and yet again I need to re-familiarize myself with exactly where they came off. You see there was one over here keeping these out of the way. There was another one over here. So yeah definitely don't want any wires to be touching anything too hot like that one. So yeah that looks like a heat sink on that transistor there so I shall have a I shall have a look at that. So re-familiarise myself with the pictures and I shall join you again in just a second. So looks like there was one just holding these two together over here. Um, this one even though it's it's kind of touching I'm just going to bend that out of the way actually I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm hoping this doesn't get too hot but it was already very close um, if I look at images um, of when I took this out it's it's very close indeed. Um, I might 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 tie this one up together and just so we'll pop one in here one one over here and then there's a another one just holding it holding it on over here And that's the power supply reconditioned and ready to fit back into the beam. Quick slurp of tea. So let's pop that over there. And as all good Haynes manuals say, refit. Is reverse of removal. Not sure if that's quite square to be honest with you. Just make sure that's out. I haven't got anything to plug into this yet. This is like an auxiliary power so socket. That's better. I don't want to end up chasing that back into the power supply and then having to remove the power supply again. So, there's that. Let's put the, uh, let's put the keyboard back in properly. pop these connectors back so that's the uh, negative 5 volts there very helpfully these are marked 0 volts and then connectors 1 is that 2 and 3 over here somewhere 3 over there so black one to the 0 Go. I think that's uh, I think that's wired in. Let's flip the beeb over. Just make sure that power supply is in there nice and nice and tight. Flip it over. And then we can put the top back on. Fingers crossed this is going to work. go right gotta admit I'm a little bit nervous now a quick slurp of tea and uh, let's, let's plug it in and see if it works is my switch on is my switch on the skew are they all were they always like that <laughs> looks like it's a bit of a funny angle who knows Okay, on, off, there we go, off. We are going to need, actually, so going for going for composite. Um, don't know if you remember those old BNC connectors. Um, so 10, 10 base T networking, anyone remember that? Of course you do. Um, 
I think I was using this little adapter with uh, with one of my um, one of my Betamax video recorders to to tape tape to tape. <laughs> so hopefully hopefully that works, and we can plug in a composite signal into one of my TVs. Right, let's get rid of a little bit more stuff. Have to try and environmentally friendly dispose of those somehow. Not sure. I'm going to have to look those up. I don't think you can just pop those in the bin. But uh, I'll look that up. So, bringing the TV, plug in the signal. Give our beeb some mains. There we go. It's in the wall in the wall so let's let's pop that on oh, I am I'm pretty I'm pretty nervous it's been a while since I've done anything like this so right just make sure we've got everything that we need we're all set and here we go so three two one fantastic it works she lives <laughs> brilliant stuff so there we go this is it this is the first time i've fired up um my, my bbcb it is indeed a 32k model i wasn't sure um, i've no reason to believe it wasn't looking at the chips on the board and the revision number um but yeah there we go that was that was the first power on she lives <laughs> fantastic stuff cool oh so what happens as soon as you switch on an old 8-bit micro you type 10 print hello world oh the keyboard seems to be working i've just realized <laughs> brilliant uh 20 go to 10 and then you run it does it work yes it does oh fantastic stuff brilliant i've got no idea how to come out of this now do we break yeah, we break there we go super stuff so there she go there we go she lives indeed she does well thanks for joining me it's a it's been a it's been a while it's been it's been three t's i'm literally just down to the bottom of uh of the third mug cool so it's taken a little while but it's been worth it i need to go and read that or at least the first couple of chapters so i know what i'm doing because i don't know what i'm doing with this this is this is this is kind of brand new to me as i said in a in in the previous video to this um my high school had one or two of these in a, in a corner but we didn't rightly use them we were using our own nimbuses um i have got uh, friends of of my family that had one of these um we kind of just used it to game um, when we were around seeing our friends uh so yeah there's a, there's a lot there's a lot to learn there's a lot that this micro can teach me so uh with a little bit of luck we'll be we'll be learning some of this together and um getting to grips with bbc basic a lot of people out a lot of you a lot of you out there um say that bbc basic was pretty much the best basic out there uh if you disagree say something down in the comments um but yeah i'm i'm really looking forward to to learning a little bit more about this micro so thank you very much for watching really do appreciate it um, if you like what you saw give me a thumbs up um, please consider subscribing to my channel get in touch in the comments below because um, i'd love to have a chat with you and um yeah thank you for watching i look forward to seeing you again in another video soon